The following program is sponsored by Friends of Life Outreach International. Coming up, Jenny Allen helps you stop trying to conceal or control your feelings and untangle your emotions. I'd gotten apathetic and numb because I was afraid of sadness. I was afraid of fear. I was afraid of anger. And when I felt it again, it awakened me to joy. It awakened my heart back to run to Him with every little feeling. You know, when I do get mad to confess and to make it right, it's scary at first, but it absolutely is living. Everybody, welcome to Life Today. I'm Tammy Trent, and this is Randy Robison. It's always. Randy, have you ever gone to a women's conference? <laughs> Why not, not, on purpose. <laughs> yeah, not, not on purpose. Not on purpose. Not on purpose. So I've been doing a lot of women's conferences, as you know, for many years. I absolutely love it. Many guys do sneak in, by the way. Okay. So you could. You could put a hat on, little sunglasses or something. Keep that in mind. <laughs> but women's conferences are amazing. They're so, so fun. <laughs> and I did Women of Faith for like four years, uh, right after Trent had passed, and it was such a platform of healing for me. It was mainly just sitting under some incredible women, women of the faith, women of the word, just authentic women. And I remember as I was coming out of, of Women of Faith, uh, there was this awesome girl that was coming in. Her name was Jenny Allen. And I remember going to one event and hearing her speak, and I thought, man, I absolutely love this girl. She was so fantastic, and I thought, I wonder when our paths will ever get the chance to cross. And guess what? Today they're crossing. Jenny Allen is here because she has a brand new book out, Untangle Your Emotions, Naming What You Feel and Knowing What to Do About It. Jenny, welcome to Life oh, Today. It's so good to meet you. Yeah, it's so and good I to meet always you. love hanging out with you. Yeah, yeah you're always fun. And <laughs> yeah. so the if gatherings, though, they're still going, yeah. They I mean, are. They're going yes. strong. Yes. Yeah. yeah, you know, I always hear great things about that. It's really pretty amazing because it live streams out all over the world. We've reached 176 countries and wow. all of these groups of people all over the world are, are coming in live. Love it's really it. special. It was so many Incredible. women in one place. I yeah. can only imagine. It. It <laughs> I can only imagine <laughs> that it is a tangle of emotions. <laughs> There's some emotions. Yes, yes. There are some emotions. And speaking of emotions, you talk about the fact in your book that many people struggle yeah. with their emotions and being sort of in a pit. You know, sure. like getting into this pit of emotions and not knowing how to get out. So I'm going to start right up at the top by asking you if you have personally ever found yourself in a pit. Never. Never. Come on. Come on. <laughs> no, of course. I mean, the, almost everything I've ever built or produced has come out of pits. It's come really? out of places that I've been mm. all knotted up. There's a little stick figure in the beginning of the book, and it was, I drew it. It was, it was all these um, <laughs> pictures. It was, it, they kept trying to draw it, and I was like, no, messier. And it was this little tangle uh, over the stick figure, and it was how I felt, right? It was like, I feel that tangle. Girl, I can relate. Right? That's me. Yeah, that's my fancy drawing. That's me. Um, and so I, I get that, where I feel like I, so what I would do is I would cope with my emotion or conceal it or control mm. it because that was easier than actually facing it. And I just genuinely didn't have the tools or know what I was supposed to do. I also really believed that what's the point? What's the point in really being sad or really being afraid? Mm. What, why does it matter? What's going to change in our in my life, if I look back or process something, it just felt like a waste of time. I was like a dude in that way. Like I just didn't, I actually <laughs> didn't feel as emotional as you'd think because I was more just convinced that those negative feelings were, I just didn't want to feel them. And so I pushed them away. But what happens over time is you become apathetic. And so yes, I feel yeah. like that's where I got stuck really where, was I was just really numb coming out of COVID and I felt kind of disconnected and from my own heart and from people. And I, I wanted to heal and I wanted to figure out why I was so checked out. And so that began a journey for me that, that's been over the last few years where I, I, it's ch I've changed my whole view on really? emotions. And I've realized how wrong we get emotions, that we do think that they're negative when God is emotional and God built us to be emotional. 
and it is you are emotional and you are emotional we all are every human Definitely. even if you think i'm the least emotional person i don't feel emotion you do because you were built by god and he built you to be emotional so you may express it differently or not at all mm. but we all contain these feelings that sometimes we wish we didn't have. Right, well, okay, so you bring up an interesting point because we all, whether we're aware of it or not, have a theology of emotions. Yeah. Uh, and I, I think a lot of that is, you know, taught if you're raised in a church, you were taught certain things, whether explicitly or simply implied. Um, what is what is a good theology of emotions? Oh, that's such a good question. So when I go over to the side of the world and how they view emotions. You see that it's follow your heart, whatever you feel, mm. like whatever you feel is your God. And so the world is chasing their feelings and chasing what they want. So the church has really responded to that and said D emotions are dangerous. Yeah. Mm. And I understand mm -hmm. where that comes from because, and I, I certainly felt the same way. Yet we have to, take this further because they aren't dangerous. They are given by God and God felt all the emotions. You see him be delighted in creation. You see Jesus in all the different ways that he felt emotion. He felt fear in the garden of Gethsemane. The Greek words actually, actually translated to fear or anxiety. That's what he was feeling in the garden of Gethsemane. Mm -hmm. So you see all of these moments where there, there is a God, the Holy Spirit who grieves over our sin. Like there, there's a God who feels all of these emotions. So they can't be bad in themselves. They can't be sinful. They can't be wrong. And, and he built them into us. And so they can't even be neutral. They've got to be good because mm. in his image, we are made. And so, and we are made fearfully and wonderfully. So there, there is a misconception that emotions are bad. What we do with them, like Ephesians says, in your anger, do not sin. So there's, there's a sense that it's possible then, therefore, to in our anger not sin. <laughs> yes, so we've got yeah. to we've got to process okay how our behaviors and how and our thoughts and think places we can sin. But the emotion itself um, is a gift to help us process a very broken world. Okay, I got a timeout on behalf <laughs> of of a large portion of the audience right now that is going. But wait a minute. Okay, jealousy, anger. You mentioned anger. Yeah. Uh, is hatred an emotion? Yeah, uh, you know, I mean, God, I, I, everybody watching sure. right now is, is ticking off the list so, of, of bad yes. emotions sure, yes. sure. in their so, mind. So let me back it up just a little bit okay. and help. So there's a reason that you explode on your kid on the way out going to church. Like there's, there's a reason. In fact, the best way to do this is when is, a, when is a time recently you felt an emotion, a strong emotion, whether you acted out or not? No, I've been, I've, I've been angry over the weekend. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah, something. So you got angry. Mm. Yeah, oh, so, sure. So you remember that feeling? Oh, gosh, yeah. Yeah. So when's the first time you remember feeling that? I remember a time where yeah. I threw a roller skate. Okay. And it <laughs> unfortunately go, landed on oh, someone <laughs> else's car. Yeah. And I got in trouble for that, but it was out of frustration that the skate yeah. wouldn't work right. And I was very, very young. How old do you think you were? Six or seven. Maybe? Okay, so now I want you to think about that six or seven year old. And there were probably great reasons that, like that six or seven year old isn't processing sin and the world right. and theology yet. That seven year old with the roller skate is just mad, right? Just frustrated. Just, yeah, just, just frustrated. Angry. Yeah, just. And yeah. what would you say to that seven year old that feels so mad? Right now? Today? Yeah. Oh. Uh, if you were the adult in the room. Well, I got to do that because my son's just like me. Well, <laughs> right? uh, yeah, no, you try to walk them through. And, and you know, it's my, my daughter's doing this with my grandson, who is three. Actually, and I'm going, I wish someone had done that with me. Yeah. Talking through the emotion yeah. mm -hmm. and, and directing that in the right, right way. So there was probably a good reason you were mad that day mm -hmm. that made sense. And if I were to hear that reason, I'd probably be like, of course you were mad. And if I heard the reason this weekend, I might say, of course, you were mad, or I might say you overreacted. Now, we could get into the fine, is it a sin that you overreacted this? Or we could go to the source and go, where did that originate? And where does that keep coming from? Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm encouraging people to do. Mm -hmm. Of course, hatred is not always good, but there's probably a reason. And so what I believe is that we're missing these things God wants to do in us and for us when we ignore them. Mm -hmm. When we just keep getting mad over and over and over again, we're missing what that anger is actually trying to point us to, and it's to healing. When, when you look at how most people deal with emotions, because we demonize them, because we say these are bad, these are dangerous, 
We cope with them, we control, we try to control them, which never goes well, by the way. <laughs> we try to um, conceal them. Well, all of that actually comes out sideways and to the people that we love. And so what I'm encouraging us to do is go, okay, let's not do that. What does God say we should do with them? Because are they dangerous? Heck yeah, of course. But it's because of how we're viewing them. And so if we view them as gifts and go, okay, what are they trying to tell us? They actually serve as the greatest point of connection mm. between us and God and us and other people. Okay. The reason I don't yeah. want to tell you more details is, I knew there is was because a reason. there's, well, and it's inherent in all of us, there is shame. Sure. Mm. Right. Because, mm. I don't know if that just comes, but I can tell you, I've been in enough churches to know that we should feel ashamed when we're naked and we're yeah. putting our, you know, everything out and for yeah. everybody to mm -hmm. see. Yeah. But is God that, didn't do that. But is that even, what is that based on? Like, that's what we've got to do is yeah. Romans 8, 1, there is therefore now no condemnation yeah. for those who are in Christ well, Jesus. Well, it's based on bad theology. So we get to come in and go, I just lost my mind on my kid. We get <laughs> right. to go in. It right. should be the wow. safest place in the world to share this stuff. Mm. But because of shame, you're right, because of the division that we feel. But this is the power of God is to is to remind us of the truth. The enemy wants us to believe the lie of shame. Yes. God wants us to believe that we are not condemned and therefore the point of connection between us and him and each other is our point of struggle. Wow. And so those knots that I felt, that picture, mm. were supposed to be ropes that mm. were tying me to God, but I would gotten apathetic and numb because I was afraid of sadness, I was afraid of fear, mm. I was afraid of anger. And when I felt it again, it awakened me to joy, it awakened my heart back to run to him with every little feeling, you know, when I do get mad to confess and to make it right. Um, it's so much more fun to, to live in that point of connection than to stuff it down. It's scary at first, but it absolutely is living. It is living. And so if we could not be so afraid of it, realize that God feels these things too. It says that he Em, em, um, he empathizes in our weakness, mm. that he feels our weakness. That's such a gift. Wow. We have a God that feels it. Then we could just not be so afraid of it and actually begin to process it and begin to heal. Jenny, thank you for this counseling session. I know, right? I <laughs> didn't know I'd be on This so good <laughs> because honestly, I, as you're talking to Randy and Randy's thinking about childhood stuff, I mean, we all yeah. have stuff from our childhood right. that we have concealed, that we have kept down, we've pushed away, we've, we've hidden. Sure. Um, and then we have what? Years and years yeah. and years and years of it because of even what Randy said too. It's like, I don't want to talk about it. I shouldn't be dealing with this or I, I right. feel shame or I feel guilt or sure. I've been raised in the church so I should handle this better. Mm -hmm. And so I'm not not going to talk about it and pretend it didn't happen, but my best friend saw that it happened. <laughs> so, <laughs> now, right. how do I fix this? But yeah. I, I love everything you said is almost like a bit of a revelation. Like, <gasps> oh my gosh! So it's also fixable. Like, yeah, I mean that is one way to say it. I mean, we're not meant to but, fix things, in, but to feel them. But, but I think I think there's hope, right? It's, yes. it's like you can. It's not like you have to get stuck there forever. That's not what I'm saying. Yes. I think it's just not being afraid of it right. and trusting God with it. Absolutely. And as you do that, relationships deepen. When you think of somebody that's cried to you about something, mm. they they feel ashamed. They're embarrassed. They're, they, mm. What do we all say when we're the one crying? I'm so sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. We put our yeah. head down. But the person, if you're the person on the other side of the table and they're sharing with you, you feel so grateful. Yes. It's yes, such a yes. gift. It's such a yes, gift. Yes, it is. Is there a difference between tangled up in our emotions and suffering in depression yeah. or anxiety? Absolutely. And I know you talk a lot about that, Yeah. your personal experience in this sure. book and what you went through yeah. with your husband. Yeah. And it's tough. It's tough to read. Yeah. Um, he He's walked through depression twice and he wanted to share this it's just the issue of our day, mental health, I and mean, we, we see it everywhere. And so I could never talk about a subject like this without really getting into the depths of our experience with that. And, you know, what's so great about my husband is he's grown so much emotionally. And that's exciting that you can do that, by the way. It's, it's an grow. amazing thing. You can yeah. grow in it. And he's grown in it. And, and just recently, as I was writing the book, I was a month in, and he sat down with me and said, Jenny, I think I'm back in this season of depression again. Wow. And, wow. and I remember even then, even as I'm writing a book about not fixing our emotions, but actually feeling them mm. and allowing God to, 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 to use them for purposes that he intends, he, I am like, oh no, how long is this going to last? Like, how long are you going to be sad again? You know? Oh. And he said the wisest thing. He was like, you know, we're just going to be sad for a little bit. Like, mm -hmm. I'm just going to be here. Mm -hmm. And, 
and he was at ease with it this time. I mean, not that he wanted to stay there, but he just realized there were real circumstances that were mm -hmm. difficult that were causing this moment in his life, and it was several months. But, but he owned it, and he sat in it, and he was honest about it, and he talked about it, and it brought such closeness to our family mm -hmm. versus him hiding it and lashing out sure. at us. And instead, he was so genuine and honest. I remember my son wrote a letter to him, and it was so tender. And it was just, Dad, I'm so proud of you, and I admire you so much. It was just such a beautiful point of connection mm -hmm. because my, my husband let us in mm -hmm. and, and said, this is what I'm going through. My kids rallied. It, it brought us closer. Yeah. And so mental health, you know, the way I describe it in the book is it can, you know, imagine that emotions are an ocean, and sometimes you're standing on the shore and they're hitting your ankles, and you're like, I see that. Okay. I'm okay. Like, I'm sad, but... But I see it, I, I recognize it. Sometimes you're, you know, hip deep. Sometimes you're, you're swimming, but you're still in control and you, and you feel okay, but you, you know that you're sad and it's a, maybe a season of sadness or grief. But then sometimes you get out too deep and you just feel like, I'm gonna drown. Mm -hmm. and, and that's where you just need help. And you have to look at how long have I been here? And praise God for wise counselors, for yes. wise doctors, for people that, that know how to help today. That was not the case in prior generations. Mm -hmm. But today there's so many people that are trained to really help you when you feel like you're drowning. And sometimes I think at different points in all of our lives with the world we live in, sure. we might need that. Sure. I, I was uh, near the ocean not too long ago and some girls were taking pictures in the ankle deep waves yeah. and a big one oh, just yeah. came Check out of out. nowhere <laughs> and smacked hey, them. Hey, that'll preach. Right? I know, right? Yes. It's like That's that sometimes. It it's like yeah. you're not looking and right. man, all of a sudden you just get walloped. Okay. Right. I want to run through this very fast because we're out of time. If you want, if, if you really want to dive into this, you get the book and we will yeah. send it to you when you support the mission outreach today. But I got to ask you about this last point because yeah. you walk through, notice your emotions, name your emotions, yeah. feel your emotions, share your emotions, and you and you cover these in detail again in the book. And I know I'm, I'm shortchanging everybody out there sure. watching, but you end with choose yeah. your emotions. Yeah. Is that, is that a real thing? It's, it's to choose what you're going to do with your emotions. Okay. So I don't think we always get to choose our emotion. Right. A lot of times sadness finds us and you can really, really work hard to not feel it. But at the end of the day, you need to feel it. And so, but what are you going to do with it? That's and so it. I, I've seen, we have a choice. We can mm. let it consume us, that it becomes our God, or we can submit it to God and it will connect us deeper to him. And that is, that is what I've experienced. And it, I, I, I don't want anyone to miss it. You said trust God with your emotions yeah. earlier. And, yeah. and I think that's the crux of it. And then even trust others yeah. with your emotions. Yeah. And that's hard for people, but you're saying that there's hope in that. Yeah, I mean, that's what he wants. Mm. That's what he built him for. He built him for us to, to heal together. Yeah. I was just talking to a Navy SEAL yesterday and he was talking about being in combat. And he said, you had to turn off your emotion to go do your job because it was so impossible to think about what you were doing, mm. potentially killing humans. You know, I mean, this was just so hard. But then you'd come back to the barracks and you would be together and you'd weep together. Mm. And he said, I've never experienced anything like that, weeping together. He said, I don't think I ever will again. And I stopped him. I said, oh, no, no, don't ever say that mm. because that's how it's supposed to be. Yeah. Because we're all at war. We're all facing things that are feel impossible. And we're supposed to be going back to the barracks and crying together and weeping together because mm. there's nothing actually more bonding and powerful than sharing our emotions together. It's how God meant us to do life together. Mm. Oh, wow. Mm. Oh, that, that is powerful, Jenny. You yeah. know what? Yeah, yeah. You're about to see an example of that. Yeah. You're about to see an example of some people feeling some deep emotion that I was able to sit with uh, and that others in our ministry team have been able to sit with. I want you to sit with them and their painful emotions because there is hope on the other side of it. Watch and you'll see how. So this is where you get your water. It's just unbelievable. We just got through walking down this crazy steep hill where I literally just fell coming down. And this mom is coming down here to collect water and she is about to carry this. This is five gallons of water, eight pounds per gallon, 40 pounds. She's gonna put that on her head while she has a baby on her back, and she's gonna walk back up that hill. 
and this is what this mother's drinking. This is why two of her children have died. Two of her children both passed away from the water that was here that they had to drink. Esperance has another baby on her back called Angeline or Angel. Earlier I was saying how beautiful she was and she said, how can my baby be beautiful when the water that she drinks makes her so sick? And I had to tell her that she was beautiful because God made her and that I see the image of God in her. You know that in the same region right here in this village, over 32 mothers have lost children in the last couple of years. Would you please, please help us bring clean water to this village? We will take what you give and we will make a difference in the lives of villages all over the world through Water for Life. Yes, we will. Yes, we will, John. That is our promise. It's always been our promise. We will do everything we possibly can to get to every child, every village, every family that we can possibly reach. That's our goal. When I look at that piece and I, I see her words, I tried everything. Oh man, it almost knocks the wind out of me because I think of things in my life, the hardships I've had, struggles I've had, a suffering I've had in my life where I feel like I've tried everything to make it better, to fix it. My struggles seem very little in comparison to hers and in losing her children and the fear of losing more. I tried everything. It makes me kind of pause for a moment and think, have I done everything I can to help those who need my help? This is just one story. This is another day. This is another question I have. We've got to do everything we can to reach these families. I want to bring them hope. I want to help them, give them another reason, be another reason. I want to try. I want to do what I can. Our goal this year is to drill 350 wells, and I hope we go beyond that in 20 nations. It will be life, life-giving water. Randy, there's something so real about this opportunity that we get to be a part of. Yeah, you know, it is, it is an opportunity. Yes. It is a tragedy. It is a terrible situation in, in so many places, but that is an opportunity, and I yeah. think that's how we need to look at it. So when you see the images of a child who is suffering, when you see the images of a mother who is in pain, Yes, I want you to see the emotions that they're feeling, but I want you to see that it is an opportunity. And you got a little bit of a glimpse. And Tammy, I know you've seen this out in the mission field with John Yates, too. Yeah. Uh, and this goes on with so many of our mission partners. There's a ministry opportunity that takes place totally, right there. Totally, totally. We're not just tending to their physical needs, though. We are absolutely doing that. Yeah. We are shining a light, and that light is Christ into yes. the darkest, most desperate places. Yes. We can only do what you enable us to do. We can only reach the goals that you enable us to reach. The 350 wells in 20 nations, that is, that is our prayer, mm -hmm. that is our hope. I'd love to go right past it. We can only do it with your support. This is the last week we'll be on the air asking for your support, so let me quickly tell you how it breaks down. Your gift of $48 today will help provide water for life for 10 people clean drinking water. A gift of $144 will provide life-giving water for 30 people. Some of you can drill an entire well. The average cost of that globally, $4,800. Whatever though, it's, it's just critical that we act and act today because as we're wrapping up this campaign, we need to get things in motion, literally wheels in motion so that we can get to these villages quickly and time is critical. So please don't delay. Pick up the phone right now if that's how you give. Maybe easier to go online. Click, click, click. You just made a difference in someone's mm -hmm. life. Whatever you can do, whatever God puts on your heart, I pray that you'll do it today and help us give water for life. Every day, thousands of lives are lost to waterborne disease, and nearly half of those are children.
under the age of five. Through Mission Water for Life, you can give mothers hope and children a future as we provide clean, life-giving water for thousands of children and their families before it's too late. With your gift today, you can help drill and establish 350 water wells this year. Your gift of $24 will help provide clean water for five children. A gift of $48 will help provide for 10. $72 will provide for 15. And $144 will help provide life-giving water for 30 people for a lifetime. With a gift of any amount, we'll send you Daughter, written by James and Betty's granddaughter, Lainey Renee. This insightful book invites all girls and women to walk in the freedom of their God-given identity and embrace who they really are. With your gift of $100 or more, you may request the Great is the Lord decorative blanket, featuring the words of Psalm 145.3. This beautiful blanket is perfect for comfort in cold weather and a reminder of your help with Water for Life. Finally, please consider a gift of $1,200 to help provide water for 250 people or a gift of $4,800 to help sponsor a complete well and request our new bronze sculpture, A Cup of Water, inspired by Jesus' words in Mark 9, 41. This is the last week. Please call, write, or make your gift online. So hope you're going online and giving the best gift you possibly can give. You must know that it'll make an enormous difference. And this is the last week, so jump on in. Let's do something to change the lives of so many people. And listen, for any amount that you're able to give today, request this book, Untangle Your Emotions. We want to make sure to get that to you, Jenny. Yeah. It has been so great having you here today. Do you have any last, final, really great words for well, us? Well, this is what I'll say. <laughs> is If any of you feel overwhelmed by your emotions, I just want to say, of course you feel this way. Of course, the world is broken. And of course, our hearts are broken too. And so you are not alone. And gosh, I just pray grace over your life that you would experience God's delight over you, even in your fear, even in your sadness, even in your anger. Mm. Such a good word. God bless you, girl. I need a Jenny in my life every day. (laughs) You probably do too. And I'm so glad you were here today to have Jenny in your life. Thanks for being here. We're going to see you next time, I hope, on Life Today. Bye-bye. Fight the Good Fight by James Robison and Jay Richards reveals the battle for our culture. Constitution shattered, heroes vilified, but hope remains. Unite, repent, and stand firm. Fight the good fight. God's giving us let's throw one last, last chance to see where we're on, going on this train. Fight the good fight in our post-Christian society next week. Life Today is made possible by the supporters of Life Outreach International. Your gift will be used exclusively for the exempt purposes of life. The ministry features specific outreaches as examples of the programs it supports and conducts. Gifts are considered to be without restriction as to use unless explicitly stipulated by the donor. The ministry is a member of the ECFA.